one time, I think it was at least a decade ago now, I was sitting in a coffee shop in the Bay Area. While sipping my latte and enjoying my muffin, I watched in fascination as the person across from me seemingly tested a connected toothbrush. And all I could think was, what will they think up next? Wow, I really had no idea where this IoT train was headed. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In order to get a successful IoT design launch today, we need a robust toolbox of cloud connectivity solutions, sensor interfaces, radio modules, and more. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Paul Vigile from Infineon and I investigate the PSOC 62 S2 Evaluation Kit. We take a closer look at the key features included in this kit and how it can help you jumpstart your next IoT design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Paul. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Okay, so we're talking about the PSOC 62 S2 Evaluation Kit today. But Paul, before we get started, what all is included in this kit? In the box, you will see you get the evaluation board, the blue box. There is a black cable, some jumper wires, plus the Wi-Fi antenna. Additionally, we will ship a piece of paper, which gives you the instructions on how to unpack, attach the kit to your PC, and get started with the first code examples and get you rolling. The kit itself is uh, based on PSOC 62 MCU. So it comes with an M2 interface connector. This is, let's say, the biggest advantage and the newest thing that comes with this board. The idea here is that you can exchange modules from one another. You have one base board, but you can try out different connectivity modules with the same baseboard. As you know, we have different module providers, so different connectivity providers that create a connectivity Wi-Fi module, and you can simply use this connector to swap in and out different modules, evaluate them, and in the end, choose the right product that you want to do your design with. The board itself comes with an onboard programmer and debugger, which means you can run code examples, debug them, hold the debugger, inspect variables, and develop your application. Furthermore, the board is equipped with a Quad SPI North Flash, 64 megabyte, and also Quad SPI FRAM. As usually, we ship our board with a CapSense butter and button slider and a microSD card connector. The board can be extended with an Arduino Uno R3 connector. So on the board itself, we will later come to it in a later stage, how the board can be extended. But you can simply plug on an additional board with more hardware and integrate this additional hardware into your application. To extend the board, we also have a micro bus interface. So this is a quite, let's say, common bus for additional add-on boards that you can used to extend the board with additional hardware. So what are the supported use cases that we showcase with our board? As you can imagine, MCU together with Wi-Fi equals, let's say, an IoT application. So you can make use of our latest and greatest Wi-Fi module and together with our PSOC 62 MCU. Plus, we also ship one of our security controllers with it, so the security controller itself is called Optica Trust M. And this additional component on the BOM, let's say, should enable more secure provisioning use cases for later on. So, Paul, can you walk me through the features included in this kit? Oh, for sure. Let's take a closer look on the picture, how the front and the back side of the board look like. One thing you notice immediately is the green Board. So the green board consists of a Wi-Fi connectivity module, which is attached to the base board using an M2 connector. The antenna is connected via this SMA connector to this uh, orange-looking flexible PCB. 
On the top section, you see the Arduino connector that I mentioned before, which you can use to extend the baseboard, use additional hardware on it, develop your use case. Bottom left, you can see the microbus connector for the additional hardware that I just mentioned. And on the right-hand side, you can see the slider to create some CapSense use cases. So, Paul, can we dig in a little deeper? What is the purpose of the subcomponents shown here on the block diagram? Of course. So the heart of our evaluation kit is really based around the BSOC 6 MCU, which is located on the right-hand side of the picture. You can see the different peripherals, which are listed on the far right, and the BSOC 6 MCU is connected via some data lines to the M2 connector. Via the M2 connector, you can hook in the Wi-Fi module to create a use case based on the BSOC 6 MCU. In order to program and debug your program, we have some additional hardware on the board. And this is where the kit proc throw comes into play. Okay, so Paul, I am especially interested in how this kit can be expanded with different extension boards. So can you explain this aspect a bit more? Sure. Let's take a closer look what I mean with extension headers. The extension header, which is quite known in the industry and is well accepted, it's called Arduino Uno R3 header. You've seen it earlier in the picture. It's the black headers that you can use to plug on additional boards onto the baseboard. For example, this can be an IoT Sense expansion kit, which offers you to add additional hardware to the board to sense, for example, barometric pressure, temperature, motion, or anything else. If you want to display something um, via TFT display, there's an ad additional expansion shield that you can use. So just for completeness, we listed one here. It's the TFT display shield board CY8CKIT28 TFT. And this allows you to also output some graphics or anything else for demo purposes. Furthermore, you can extend it with any shields that are actually compatible to the Arduino footprint. And there is a load of extension shields out there in the market. Microbus interface is an additional expansion slot that can be used. So there are third-party manufacturers which take additional sensors and actuators and input devices and create special clickboards for it, which you can put into this Microbus extension. To complete our expansion slots, I also listed here the M2 interface connector. Because this is, let's say, the main interface to evaluate our Wi-Fi products. We ship the kit already with a Wi-Fi module equipped. But if you want to evaluate a different Wi-Fi product that we offer, you are free to take out a module and insert another one for evaluation purposes. Okay, so Paul, I can easily see how this board could jumpstart my next IoT design, especially in terms of prototyping. So what kind of design elements do you think are important here when it comes to prototyping in particular? I would say the expansion slots that I mentioned before are quite important because your application in an IoT design does not only consist of a Wi-Fi device. Wi-Fi is just an enabling factor of your IoT application. But in a real life application, you really need to sense something, right? Whether it is temperature, wind speed, or something else, you need to hook on different hardware to your board to create an application which makes sense. For example, a little weather station. Using this hardware, you can build a solar powered station that is outside picking up all the environmental parameters. And this is where the extension headers come into play. Okay, so Paul, if I'm working on a rugged or industrial IoT design, I also need to include a robust radio module as well. So what would you suggest in this case? Our kit comes out of the box already with a connectivity module, which is already field proven. Due to the years and years of experience that we have collected over the years, we have hardened our to design to also work in very harsh environments. The kit that you can buy from us is based on an AROC CYW4373E 
combo, supporting one by one dual band Wi-Fi. Over the years, we have hardened the design to really work reliable. The reliable connection is based on a low power amplifier and a low noise amplifier, which work together to have a reliable module in harsh RF environments. The operating range of our module ranges from minus 40 degrees Celsius up to 85 degrees Celsius for every component utilized. Our global approvers carry several modules provider, FCC, IC, CE, RCM, mic, and Bluetooth signal approvals. Application areas are rugged handheld devices, industrial IoT connectivity, battery-powered medical devices, and industrial IoT sensors. So, Paul, what other design elements does this kit have to help me with my IoT design process? The kit itself consists of three big parts. On the one hand side, it is the PSOC 6 MCU. The MCU itself is used to create your application. For example, this would be the place where the code for environmental sensing would be hosted. Second piece of the puzzle is the AROC combo radio module. So this is the enabling element to allow you to have a connected IoT applications, whether you use a cloud service in the background that you transmit the data to. The third part which comes into the puzzle is the software enabling component. And the IDE that we provide is our Modus Toolbox. Modus Toolbox is a collection of tools that allows you to develop your application. On the one hand side, it helps you develop your application on the PSOC 6 MCU, but it also offers libraries and connectivity libraries that enable you to broadcast your data from your main MCU to the cloud. Excellent. Okay, so Paul, if I'm ready to get started using the PSOC 62S2 for my next design, what kind of supporting assets do you guys have to help me? First thing to start with is always our product page on Infineon.com. So this is the main landing page where you find all the bits and pieces about the kit. So it's a quick start guide, data sheet, and more resources that you need to get started. The kit itself comes with a printed quick start guide, but you can also find it online in PDF form. There's a user guide explaining you how the expansion slot can be utilized. And if you think of taking our kit design files as a basis to create your own applications, you also find the hardware design files. So these are all the different CAD libraries that you can use and utilize to create your PCB design. The kit itself is supported into Modus Toolbox with the so-called board support board package. So this support package makes sure that your kit is well integrated, that you can use the kit with a variety of software. On software side, we have many code examples for your board that should give you an idea of how you can use the board and its capabilities. We also have this expansion slot for different hardware modules that allows you to extend the existing hardware that you have available. Excellent. Well, Paul, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure for me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.